Last week, Elon Musk took a massive L, according to his own sycophants, when he did the unthinkable by naming Linda Yaccarino as the new CEO of Twitter, who is supposedly going to help him transform the platform into X, the everything app, which I'm sure the process for that transformation is going to go very smoothly and be welcomed by every single person on the app. Now, if you're a normal person whose brain hasn't been rotted by right-wing politics, you probably view Linda with skepticism, considering that she's a former NBC Universal executive and right-wing hack appointed by the Trump administration to lead the World Economic Forum. And she also follows far-right figures on Twitter, including stochastic terrorist libs of TikTok. And she's even liked tweets doubting the integrity of the 2020 election, which pretty much tells you everything that you need to know about her. So to the average person, this is change on the outside, continuity on the inside. But to right-wingers, this is proof that Elon Musk is turning Twitter woke. I wish I were kidding about that. For example, one of the most popular responses to Musk's announcement came from none other than Cat Turd 2, who responded writing, Elon Musk, the woke mind virus is a threat to the world. Also, Elon Musk, I just hired a far left loon deeply infected with the woke mind virus to run Twitter. Twitter 2.0 was fun while it lasted. Get ready for it to suck again. Now, I get it. Cat Turd 2 will never be pleased by anything or anyone, but he wasn't alone here in vocalizing his trepidation about this new CEO because YouTuber The Quivering, excuse me, The Quartering also decided to speak up about this. And this is somebody who is a fan of Twitter. He basically begged Elon Musk to not step down from Twitter when he ran his poll. But here's what he had to say about the new Twitter CEO. I cannot believe he hired this broad. Like maybe the absolute worst possible. I mean, why not just hire Jack again? Like this is like, oh, I mean, this is a terrible CEO to hire in all senses of the word. You want to bring this person on to help you increase ad revenue and you want her to work advertising deals? Fine. But as the CEO, that's the person that sets the vision for a company. That's the person that, you know, uh, is actually, by the way, she's still in the WEF. I mean, this is insane. And I saw earlier this morning, RIP Twitter was, was trending. I mean, this is this is a disastrous hire for Elon Musk. Another huge misstep uh, in his leadership at Twitter. I don't know. I can't possibly think of a single reason why he would have hired this person if everything he said about the WEF, about globalist, about you know the poke, about masks. If that was all the truth, then I don't know a single reason uh, that that you would hire this person at all. It's it's appalling. So there's a lot of outrage about her association with the World Economic Forum and also concerns that she will be in favor of censorship. And as the Daily Beast explains, quote, people would have been much happier if it was not a WEF, UN, or WHO member. But here we are, a pussy hat WEF member that promotes vaccine propaganda, masking, and lockdowns. One right-wing Twitter user with over a quarter of a million followers wrote, which had accumulated over 3,000 likes. Quote, how fucking lovely. Former Newsmax host Emerald Robinson likewise wrote Rip Twitter. Over on Donald Trump's Truth Social site, the platform sent out a news notification after Musk's hiring decision was made public around noon with an attached story that attempted to expose Yaccarino's quote, woke ideology. Seems like someone who definitely won't cave to woke corporate censors, Truth Social communication staffer Matthias Wagner said. Far-right radio host Stu Peters, in a text message to the Daily Beast, accused Yaccarino of being close to a worldwide corporate run election theft syndicate, which he said is evidence that Musk's claim to hold freedom of speech as his top priority is a lie. So that was a small sample of the outrage to Elon Musk naming this new CEO. But what's amazing to me is that they're still not entirely sure if Elon Musk actually cares about free speech, as if there's like some sort of a question there. You don't have to wonder anymore. He does not care about free speech. Twitter is literally censoring a documentary critical of India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi after they pressured him to do so. And most recently, he's censoring tweets at the behest of Turkey's far-right government to suppress Erdogan's opposition. And he's failed so miserably at protecting free speech that some of the worst 
list, people are even pointing out that maybe he should try to do better. For example, insufferable liberal Matty Iglesias pointed out the Turkish government asked Twitter to censor its opponents right before an election and Elon Musk complied should generate some interesting Twitter files reporting. Now, Elon Musk actually responded to that saying, did your brain fall out of your head, Iglesias? The choice is to have Twitter throttled in its entirety or limit access to some tweets. Which one do you want? Hmm, take a principled stance to protect free speech or censor content at the behest of the Turkish government and lose ad revenue in Turkey. Hmm, we'll go with option B. That's what Elon Musk did. And someone who should theoretically be on Elon's side, former NBA player turned Republican Party shill and as Cantor Freedom, sharply denounced Elon Musk's decision to cave to the Turkish government, saying he doesn't want to hear Elon Musk talk about freedom of speech ever again. And I don't know if there's a single issue that NS Cantor and I agree on, but as a Turkish American, he knows that the Turkish government is deeply authoritarian and censorious. So he's right to be angry with Elon Musk here, even if politically they probably agree on everything else. I mean, Elon Musk, when he took over Twitter, said that free speech would be a priority. But yet, anytime he's had the opportunity to put his support for free speech to the test, he has failed every single time. But the problem is that most of Elon Musk's sycophants still haven't realized that he was full of shit and they're still wondering, oh, well, maybe with this move, he doesn't actually support free speech. He doesn't support free speech, but thankfully some of them are waking up. But this is a problem for Elon Musk because little by little, the people that he won over by buying Twitter under the pretense of protecting free speech are now starting to turn on him little by little, more and more over time. But lucky for him, even if his Tradcon fans abandon him, he has managed to ingratiate himself with online conspiracy theorists because he himself is pretty conspiratorial. For example, he went on a George Soros tweet storm after the billionaire sold his Tesla stock, saying that Soros reminds him of X-Men villain Magneto and adding, quote, he wants to erode the very fabric of civilization. Soros hates humanity. But to be fair, it's not the first time that he attacked Soros, but this is an anti-Semitic dog whistle that right-wingers have been using to promote this trope that Jewish people control everything. And Soros has basically become a synonym for all Jewish people. I mean, there are thousands of wealthy donors that buy off politicians and corrupt the political process, and they buy off Democrats and Republicans, and that's all that unequivocally. I think that elections should be publicly financed so that way wealthy donors don't have this ability to corrupt parties. But this isn't a robust conversation that people like Elon Musk are having. They're never discussing the broader issues surrounding campaign finance and money in politics, but they will bring up George Soros and pretend as if him alone is the cause of all of corruption in D.C. politics when that's a little bit bizarre, right? He is a small problem. He's a microcosm of a broader issue, but yet you hyperfixate on this one person who happens to be Jewish. Hmm, maybe they don't actually care about our corrupt campaign finance system. Maybe they're just anti-Semitic. And it seems as if George Soros is a mere conduit for their anti-Semitism. And Elon Musk is appealing to them with these types of tweets, either wittingly or unwittingly. But this isn't the only conspiracy theory that Elon Musk has fallen for. He was intrigued by conspiracy mongering over the Las Vegas shooting and the Allen, Texas mall shooting. And he also thought that an article supposing that the media was covering up black on white crime was interesting and not to mention his conspiracy mongering about the attack on Paul Pelosi. I mean, as one Twitter user put it, it really does reveal a lot about Musk's true intellect that despite sitting atop the biggest pile of money in existence, he falls down the same dumb rabbit holes as your dipshit Facebook uncle who got caught having sex with the tailpipe of, of his 1974 GTO. And that is such a good observation because... You can understand how a lonely, impoverished, working class person might fall victim to online conspiracy theories. They're desperate. They want to know why economically they're suffering. So they look for answers in all the wrong places. And as a result, they may end up finding some conspiracy community online and getting radicalized by that. That's their excuse. But what's Elon Musk's excuse? 
he's a conspiracist when he may allegedly be part of real conspiracies that actually exist that we should all care about. For example, as HuffPost reports, the government of the U.S. Virgin Islands is trying to subpoena billionaire Elon Musk for documents in its lawsuit seeking to hold J.P. Morgan Chase liable for sex trafficking acts committed by businessman Jeffrey Epstein. Now, while Musk hasn't been accused of wrongdoing over the years, they continue, there had been unconfirmed speculation encouraged by Epstein himself that Epstein had advised Musk on certain business matters. The Virgin Islands, where Epstein had an estate, sued J.P. Morgan last year, saying its investigation has revealed that the financial services giant enabled Epstein's recruiters to pay victims and was indispensable to the operation and concealment of the Epstein trafficking enterprise. They continue, lawyers for the Virgin Islands said they hired an investigative firm to research public records databases for possible addresses for Musk and reached out to one of his lawyers by email, but received no response. Hmm. Very curious. Now, the specific documents in question are possible receipts for transaction fees that Musk might have paid to Epstein or J.P. Morgan and communications between the both of them back and forth. But the point that I'm making in bringing this up, aside from just wanting to talk about this because I find it interesting, is that Elon Musk is possibly linked, although there's no allegations of wrongdoing, sexually speaking, to one of the most notorious sex traffickers in the world who claimed to have dirt on lots of powerful people. And that alone is a very valid reason to be skeptical of all elites because they use their wealth to abuse power and abuse people. And there's ample evidence for that. It's a real conspiracy. You don't have to make things up. It's right there in the open. But what's weird is that people like Elon Musk, they can connect the dots when it comes to someone like George Soros, but they can't connect the dots to other elites. And Elon Musk's fans can't connect the dots between him and the real conspiracies that exist with wealthy people. But Elon Musk is an elite. So for him to buy into these weird anti-Semitic conspiracy theories, it just doesn't make sense. It's bizarre, right? But what is crystal clear is that most people by now with a brain can acknowledge that Elon Musk is a complete fucking imbecile and he turned Twitter into a swampy shithole. But at least him hemorrhaging credibility with his own right wing sycophants is satisfying to watch. It's just a joke. And I um, I don't know what else to say about Elon Musk. He keeps taking L after L. But that's going to happen if you have no real principles and no integrity and you're just trying to ingratiate yourself with far right people. They will be they will never be satisfied unless you fully capitulate. But he doesn't realize that. And um, at the end of the day, he's still a businessman. And that does conflict with his support for free speech. So, yeah, not very principled after all, are we, Elon? Were you acting like a...